focal point. Is it good or is it not good? There's a right way to do the focal point and the wrong way. And unfortunately, we've seen hundreds of athletes this summer all across the United States doing it wrong. And we've seen it internationally in places like Australia. There's a right way to focus on the focal point and there's a wrong way to do it. And we're gonna talk about it in this video. So check it out. It's Eric Johnson from Airtay Throws Nation. In today's YouTube video, what we're going to discuss is a common cue used with elite athletes that gets used often with young throwers, and it's absolutely crushing thousands of young throwers. We just recently, if you're watching this video, we're recording this about towards the end of our summer throws tour. And if you'd like information about our camps, click the link in the description. You'll get our preseason and summer tour information. One of the things that we're talking about is the focal point, and after seeing close to 800 throwers attending our camps, we see some common things and we see a cue that's often used and it's the focal point. Now I'm gonna demonstrate what a focal point looks like with an elite thrower, which is you're gonna grab a section of the throw at say like five or six o'clock. And as you come out of the back of the ring, you're gonna catch that point. Now notice how as I demonstrate that, I'm just naturally starting to move. I caught that point. Here's what an elite thrower does. They see that point and they go. Decent point, it creates a little bit of a pause, and what the attempt there is to do what we refer to as our pillar four, which is twisting and wrapping. So what we're creating is, we're coming out of the sprint, both feet are in the air, we're wrapping the upper body, hitting the discus at the high point, and getting to set up the power position. Now here, unfortunately, is why if you're a young thrower or coach using this cue, you wanna proceed with caution. Again, many elite athletes, a lot of these cues, in my opinion, are coming from high-level successful coaches with high level top tier athletes, athletes that are already in the top 0.5%. And so when you tell an elite kid, boom, that's it, I just hit the focal point. But here's what we're seeing all across the country, all throughout our practices here in Arizona. We saw it in Australia, we've seen it all across the United States. This is what we're seeing. Kids are holding the focal point, holding the focal point, trying to turn and they're pulling themselves out of position. So if you watch me throw in this direction, as I go this way, and you're gonna see as I continue to hold and my head doesn't move with my hips, I'm pulling myself out. I'm gonna basically result in potential kind of a back end. Check out our back end video and then look at how the, the heel's coming low. You can see my weight shifting. So what you're starting to see with so many young throwers is the hold, the head is staying when it needs to be continuing to move with the hips into the throw. And then you're seeing this. So you're, so you, not only you're seeing that, but you're seeing boom and you're seeing this jaggy head motion instead of a nice continuous rolling motion. If you look at the best throwers in the world, their heads are not staying here. People might be catching a focal point like this, and you're gonna see that's me seeing the horizon the correct way on a focal point. So this is a common thing. Let's just pick the top three men's throwers in the world this year. Look at our two 70 meter throwers, Dakers, Stahl. We'll look at Guzdias. Look at the head as these guys come out of the back of the ring and you're watching their head continues to move with the hips. Rule of thumb is we don't use the cue of visual focal points. Visual focal points have a tendency to have the caveat of having the head disconnect from the lower body. And what we want to see is the head in this position. So if you look at all those top throwers, as you look at them move through the circle, you're going to notice that that head stays with the hips. And so what we see at our camps and we see internet nationally at this point, we understand the point of that cue and we're not criticizing that cue, but we're saying you have to make sure that kids are so literal and so many athletes we found will do exactly what they're told because they want to get better and what they're not doing is intuitively feeling, okay, I, I held that point and now my head keeps moving. That's it. It's, it's a literally a few tenths of a second at most and what you're seeing is athletes doubling that amount of time, holding it, and then what you see is the, the shoulder shifting back. And we're going to talk about that that in another video but the whole point of today's video is if you're using a focal point we don't want a rear focal point where the body's body's trying to move and the head staying back we don't want the focal point there we don't want the focal point here we don't want another focal point here where those kind of rear focal points origins come from is from the glide and when you're in a linear shot and I keep everything here and I'm gonna be pushing here and in a line 
then it makes sense you can hold that head back because you're not rotating, you're driving in a linear position, so your head can just go from here and drive and that helps you keep back. But as far as rotational throws go, I highly advocate against the focal point and I'm not trying to step on anybody's toes and I think again at the elite level that can work, but we use cues that we refer to looking more at body cues versus head visual cues. We want to hold the body at certain points versus holding the eyes at certain points because that can inhibit the movement and we've seen it time and time again at every camp. We make an announcement as we go through the throwing portions of our day not to work on that focal point because you can see and we explain why and how it's holding back like we just did and it creates and, it, and interferes with the counterbalance of the chest over the power position delivery leg and that's why we are going to say don't do that focal point. Okay, so hopefully you enjoyed this video and found it helpful. Again, the goal here at Air Tate Throws Nation is to help more throwers and coaches, provide them with the tools and the information to get better faster. And if you'd like more information and want to dive deep, check out our mini course below. If you want premium information where we go through hours and hours and hours of content, be sure to check out our digital program, our membership program, where you can subscribe. You have access to over 30 hours of instruction on everything that goes step by step through the throwing chain reaction system. So thanks so much for watching. Be sure to hit that like button, punch the subscribe, comment below, and we will see you on the next video. Be sure to check out our next videos. Be sure to subscribe. Visit our website for free videos. Click the links below. We have links to our free mini course. Check out our websites for camps and different detailed information. Throw farther faster by understanding the science with the throwing chain reaction system. Thanks so much for watching.